What's up everybody? So we're out in the shop and today we're working on the Sand Mai build. So just a reminder, this is Railroad Spike on the outside layers and ADCRV2 as the core. I really think this is going to turn out awesome and I really like this just classic knife shape. Now today we're going to be attaching the handle scales so that tomorrow we can go ahead and shape them. And I'm going to put all of that in one video so you don't have to worry about that being two different videos. All the handle scale stuff is going to be in this video. And speaking of the handle scales, I wanted to go with something that was just really nice and sleek and simple. So I'm going to be doing a set of scales from Corey Scott. Desert Ironwood Burl. Check out this awesome little section right here. Like, these are just going to be absolutely gorgeous on this knife. And that's what I wanted. I wanted something that was simple but beautiful in the same, uh, at the same time. And I was thinking about doing spacers, liners, or something like that. But I think I'm just going to do the knife, scales, some nice brass pins, and just leave it at that. Because I want this knife just to be a good classic knife. And I don't want it to have all the extra just stuff on it. The knife speaks for itself. It doesn't need all that excess. So that's what we're going to work on today. We're going to get these things knocked out. I'm excited about this. I really, really, really want to get into using this knife. I'm going to be EDCing it. And I mean, I'm just, again, so happy because I've been wanting to do a sand mine for a while. I finally got it done. But guys, let's jump into this. Let's get this thing knocked out. So we're going to go ahead and get these scales squared up. And for this particular build, I'm just going to focus on the sides that touch each other. So basically, squaring up the sides that are going to touch the steel because we want those nice and perfectly flat so we don't end up with gaps in between the steel and the wood because you end up with little epoxy gaps that you have to end up filling in and they don't look very good in your end result when you're trying to make a real nice looking knife. I'm going to go ahead and do my little trick where I just put tape on one side after I've squared them up and then I just cut all the excess off and this makes it to where from this point forward the scales will stay exactly where they are right now so we don't have to worry about things shifting when it comes time to drill the holes for the pins and shaping and things like that. going to go ahead and get the outline drawn out. I like to do this before I drill the holes so that just in case something shifts I know where I need to move the steel back to. And we are using 3 16 pins on this plus a 3 16 lanyard hole. So all we got to do is drill through it with one bit and make it nice and easy. Now right here, we're just cleaning up the scales a little bit. We're not trying to take off too much material. What this part is really for is getting the front of the scales, so the part that's going to meet the ricasso of the knife, nice and shaped, because we're not going to be able to do this step once we glue up the scales. So we want to get whatever angle or curve put on this before we glue it up. And then of course, after we get them set to where we want them, then we're gonna go ahead, take it over to the workbench and start hand sanding. And on this, I did 200 grit, 320 grit, and then 500 grit. I just left it at 500, but it turned out real nice. You can actually start seeing the wood grain that we're gonna end up getting out of this. And it is just looking absolutely beautiful, but what you want to focus on here, if you're going to bring them up to a point like this, is that you're not rounding over the front and moving your point to one side or the other of that center line where the scales meet, or you'll end up with a weird area where one is rounded and one is really sharp. So just kind of focus on that. Now we're going to use our five minute epoxy and I'm going to do this one a little bit different. I'm going to slow down the points where 
I am applying the epoxy to the materials, but I'm gonna speed up everything in between. Now with our feminine epoxy, we just wanna make sure that we get it nice and mixed on here, because if you have any epoxy that's not mixed, it will not cure right on your scales and you'll end up with weak spots where the mechanical bond is supposed to be nice and tight. So now, like I said, I am slowing this down on the areas where I'm applying the epoxy. And I wanna remind you what I typically do here. I only put enough epoxy on there to be able to coat it. We're not trying to put a ton of epoxy on here because we're not looking to have a whole bunch of squeeze out that you just have to clean up later. And I do fill each hole on the handle scales with epoxy so that there is epoxy in between the pins and the wood. And then we coat both the scales and the knife tang itself just to make sure that we've got plenty of epoxy where we need to have epoxy just in case there's divots or anything like that. We want to make sure that we're coating it, like I said, just enough without going too overboard. And I did scuff sand the parts of these scales that touched the, the metal or the parts that we're epoxying right now with 40 grit sandpaper so that they have nice, I guess you can call scratches in there <laughs> uh, for a good mechanical bond. When it comes to the clamps, we just want to make sure that we put enough pressure on here to squeeze out just a little bit of the epoxy, but we're not trying to crank them down so hard that we squeeze out all the epoxy. And then we're just using some acetone to clean up any of the excess that came out onto the blade near the Ricasso area, and then we can call it there. All right, so we are on day two of this video, and I wanna to talk to you all about something. So before we start shaping these handle scales, I'm gonna give you an idea of kind of what I'm gonna be talking about for this part. Now, whenever I did my Shop Talk Tuesday video uh, about, you know, edge geometry and ergonomics of handles, I feel like I didn't really explain the broomstick handle thing that I was talking about very well or the just 45 in this, the edges and calling it done instead of contouring the handle. So what I'm going to do with today's part of this video is I'm going to go ahead and show you what it looks like when someone's doing that, that just 45 or uh, what I call the broomstick handle, the difference between that and contouring. So I'm going to shape it like that first, and then we're going to go in and contour it so you can actually see the difference of what I'm talking about and how knives index in the hand whenever you're doing that. So with this one, we'll kind of go into a little bit more depth on why I choose to shape the handles the way that I do. So let's go ahead and jump into that part of this video. gonna pause for a second so I can actually show you what I'm talking about here so on this handle I went ahead and just did a little bevel on all four sides now I'm not going full-blown into doing a larger 45 on this but what I want to show y'all is even if I got a little bit more aggressive and did a little bit uh, larger 45 degree angle on this 
you know, you've got a lot of people that shape their handles like that. Basically, they knock the, the edges off and, you know, it kind of fits pretty decent in your, your hand. And I know a lot of people want to do this because they don't, not very comfortable with contouring. But what I want to show you is whenever you do this handle like this, what ends up happening is this right here is the same as this right here and this right here. So when you're holding the knife like this, it feels the same as if you're holding the knife like this. Nothing changes size wise other than maybe sometimes this will be a little bit bigger and you can kind of tell on it. But if you had a handle that was just straight back and was shaped like this, the knife feels the same no matter how you're holding it. So there's nothing really indexing this knife to make it to where you pick it up and you have your eyes closed. You pick up that knife, you automatically know that that blade edge is going to be pointing the way that it needs to go. So that's what I talk about whenever I'm talking about uh, like broomstick handles or just keeping them to where they're just all the same size. And that, that's not a bad looking handle. There's a lot of people that do that, like I said. Some people will round this a little more, but they're still not taking anything out here to make it to where it feels the way it's supposed to feel whenever you grab it, so that it indexes itself. And it's just a lot of things to think about whenever it goes into ergonomics. But what we're gonna do is we're gonna start refining this so that it does index that way. And the only real comfortable way to hold it is the way that it's supposed to be held when it comes time to cut with it. So let's get back into it. Right now what we're doing is we are just narrowing the front of the handle scales. So the part where they meet the ricasso we're kind of pulling that down a little bit so there's an angle from the back of the handle all the way to the front and it's going to make it to where ergonomically it won't want to come out of your hand if you're having to swing your arm uh, pretty hard. So we're just kind of angling it forward a little bit before we actually start contouring and rounding the edges. So do this first. And remember whenever you're doing steps like this to not let everything get real hot because even though you're not really grinding on the spine or the belly of the knife, you are still grinding on these pins and those pins can heat up and start dissolving that glue a little bit. So you want to make sure that you're just going a little bit at a time. Now it's time to go ahead and start rounding the edges. And what I'm doing here is I'm focusing more on putting more pressure towards the index finger area of the knife, so on the belly of it. And I'm putting a little bit steeper angle on that section and going in a little bit deeper on that section than I am at the butt of the knife. And that's just going to start making it to where whenever you grab it and your index finger loops around it, it's going to be able to feel that area and know that that's the way it's supposed to be held and it's going to index right. The big thing here is making sure you're putting it in your hand over and over and over again so you know that it's in the right area. Now we're going to take and taper the butt of the knife where that lanyard hole pin is and what that's going to do is make it to where whenever you put your lanyard on there it doesn't stick out real wide past the butt of the handle and 
if your hand is back there, it still feels comfortable. Now with the oscillating spindle sander, we're just gonna start focusing on softening some of those edges that we created with the 2x72 and start rounding everything to make it to where when we start hand sanding, we don't have to put in as much work. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna focus on contouring the belly of the handle a lot with this and making it to where it feels as comfortable as possible on the hand. Remember, I, I put it in my hand over and over and over again as we do these different steps to make sure that I'm shaping it where it needs to be for comfort. And if you don't have an oscillating spindle sander, you can do this with a 2x72 with a small wheel attachment, or you can actually get these spindles like this for your drill press. They sell them at Harbor Freight and all kinds of different places that sell hardware tools, but definitely something that makes life a lot easier when it comes to contouring handles. Now when it comes to hand sanding, of course, I do about an hour of this whenever I'm hand sanding and I didn't want to make y'all have to watch all of that so you're just watching a portion of it. What we did is we went from 200 to 320 to 500 grit on this and I felt like 500 grit was just enough. I, I could have went to a thousand but I didn't feel like it was necessary so I decided not to. And I do sand with the blade so basically parallel to the spine of the knife the whole entire time. I don't go across it or sand perpendicular to it. I just don't like the way, I don't wanna put sanding lines in the knife while I'm trying to erase sanding lines. That's the whole point behind that. We're using a green compound on a medium buffing wheel and it turns out real well. I, I really like the way this buffed and you'll definitely like it whenever you get to see it in the outro. Alright guys, let's go ahead and wrap up today's vlog with a little bit of that. Can you just look? at how beautiful that wood is. I mean, that doesn't even look real. That looks crazy. Just absolutely beautiful. <laughs> I mean, again, Corey Scott, damn, man. You, you just, this is just absolutely beautiful. And, uh, what I want to talk about for a second is the contouring, like what we were really trying to focus on on this. So this doesn't have all of the crazy contouring that you can put on a handle. So, you know, I've done the Coke bottle handle shape. I've done plenty of other crazy contoured. What I did to this to make it index correctly was just how I tapered in from wide to thinner not super crazy amount of taper, just enough from wide to thinner, and then right through here, making that finger well right there, just, you know, nice and contoured. You can kind of see the, where the glare is coming off of it to where it pulls in right where your index finger is gonna sit. So this is what feels comfortable not that, not that, not that, that. I could pick this up over and over and over again, and I know that that is gonna be the cutting edge, all based on how I contoured 
all of this area over here. So this is rounded here, but it gets w a lot larger rounding here and pulls in where it kind of almost crests like this from the front to here. So it dives in and there's nothing, you know, overly complicated on this. You could easily do this. It's just making sure that whenever you're focusing on making your handle that you're putting it in your hand over and over again and for me i've done a lot of edge retention tests i've done a lot of chopping and smashing things with my knives so i've got a lot of experience with being able to see what's comfortable in the hand versus what's not by actually having to smack it against something and chop into something with it i mean if you have to put on a pair of gloves to make your knife comfortable it's not a comfortable knife. You know, you should be able to do all that stuff without gloves on or anything. I absolutely love the way this is turning out. Just super classic shape. Nice hammer finish up here. We got our awesome little uh, line from where our railroad spike meets our ADC RV2. I mean, cannot be happier with this knife. Just super classy got our brass pins high polish our 3 16 brass lanyard tube I know a lot of people use the quarter inch ones but I wanted something that was not intrusive into the scales it adds a little bit of punch of color back there in contrast but nothing too crazy I, I did taper the back of the handle right there so that whenever we do our lanyard it pulls in nice uh, and tight and doesn't stick out at the widest point because this would have been the widest point of the whole knife we narrow that in and make it to where when we have our lantern on there it's nice and comfortable but guys there you go uh, I just want to thank y'all for coming by and watching these videos uh, I know that in the next one that we do for this it's gonna be sharpening it and slicing and dicing and doing that stuff but again I just want to thank y'all for coming back every single time I release one of these and watching them uh, hopefully, again, y'all get plenty of knowledge from these, and uh, a lot of these videos are me learning in the process, and then being able to, uh, you know, impart that knowledge that I've learned in the process on y'all. Uh, and then, of course, things like this, where once you've made enough handles and you've you've done that, you can start kind of tailoring the handles to what feels more comfortable. You know, don't be afraid to put yourself out there and. Get a little bit crazier with the contouring, you know? Like I said, put them in your hand over and over and over again. Make sure it's comfortable. Guys, thank y'all for coming by. If y'all would, give this video a thumbs up. Share this video or one of my other videos. And guys, if you haven't yet, bottom corner, hit that subscribe button so you get notified of the stuff that we have that's coming up. Guys, thank y'all again for coming by. Thank y'all for spending the time with me. Y'all have an amazing day. Y'all stay safe out there. I'll catch y'all next time.